Jesus does not call us to a life of ease and comfort, does he? He calls us to come and die. He does not call us to a life of self-indulgence, convenience, comfort. He does not call you to the American dream. He calls you to radical loyalty, all-out commitment, and unconditional surrender. Specifically, three crisp commands in verse 24. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. First, deny yourself. To deny yourself is not to, like you give up things for our annual fast on January or February. It's not, to, you know, giving up uh, social media or sweets for a month or something like that. This means that you give up self. This means that you relinquish your extensive self-centeredness, which all of us have from birth, and most of us are mostly unaware of it. But we give up our self-preoccupation and our self-focus and our self-centeredness. To deny yourself means you give up your very self. You give up the right to run your life, to be in charge of your life, to be in control of your life. The the opposite of self-denial is self-centeredness. It's my fixation on self, my stuff, my agenda, my dreams, my, my, my. Self-centeredness is all about me, my, and mine. It's so deeply ingrained, we're largely unaware. Self-centeredness ruins marriages. It is the biggest problem in marriages. It wreaks havoc in relationships and families. It robs us of deep joy and peace in our lives. It is the national religion of hell, and it is endemic in the human heart. Living for self is normal for Americans. Living for self is all too normal for churchgoers, but living for self is not normal for the disciple of Jesus Christ, who's made the radical resolving decision that my life belongs to Jesus, I live it for him and not for me. Church, that is normal Christian life, normal discipleship. We come to the place where we decide it is not about me. It's all about Jesus. He calls you to surrender your marriage, your singleness, your children, your health, your retirement, your house, your recreation, your retirement, your hopes, your dreams, everything. Lord, what do you want? What do you want? Deny yourself. Secondly, take up your cross. In first century Israel, which was underneath the Roman Empire, the mighty Roman Empire, it would not be uncommon for a Jewish man or a woman to see two Roman soldiers trudging along a dirt road. And behind them, a Jewish man walking, carrying a wooden beam. And if you saw a man with soldiers, and he was carrying a wooden beam, you would shudder because you know that he is going to be crucified, the most painful death imaginable and the most shameful death that existed then. In fact, our word excruciating, as in excruciating pain, comes from the Latin word for cross. It was exceedingly painful. So for us, we can look at a cross and think, you know, that is an endearing symbol. That is a reminder to me that Jesus died on a cross for my sake because he loves me. That is a warm and endearing signal for, symbol for us. But for them, it was a horror. Oh, someone is about to get crucified. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Be willing to live or die for me. Be willing to sacrifice your life for me. Are you willing to, to give up your life for me, willing to live or die. That's what Jesus calls us to us, something so radical is that. And it would not be long before Jesus would literally take up his cross and die on a cross for you and for me to save us from our sins. Have you come to the point in your life where you're willing to live or die for Christ? I love the little 
story about Nelson Mandela being at, uh, on trial in South Africa. Sometime back, I read his magnificent autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom. And fairly early in his life, as a young man, he is arrested in his fight against apartheid. And he is in the courtroom, and everybody there knows he will be, be convicted and sentenced. And the only question is, will he be sent to prison for his life, or will he be tortured and killed for his life? Given those stakes, Nelson Mandela said this. He said, ending apartheid is a cause for which I will gladly invest every day of the rest of my life and a cause for which I am fully prepared to die. Now, we admire this kind of courage for a noble cause, but as noble as that cause is, it does not compare with the greatest cause ever, the cause of Jesus Christ, which liberates people in this life and for all eternity. You and I have the greatest cause imaginable, possible, the cause of Christ. And yet so many Christians are unwilling to live and die for Jesus Christ. My prayer, church, is that this is your, if that is so, this is your day, your turning point.